to all present in this webinar. On behalf of the seminar or webinar committee of 75th Independence Celebration by Vidyashagor University, I extend a very warm welcome to all the participants of the inaugural webinar of the year-long series of seminars or webinars for the celebration of 75 years of India's independence by Vidya Shagor University. The Honorable Vice Chancellor, Vidya Shagor University, Professor Shivaji Pratim Boshu, Chairperson of the Celebration Committee for 75 years of Indian independence and patron of today's webinar, shall be among us in a short while. The principal speaker of today's webinar, Professor Ashish Lahiri, will also be with us very soon. We have come together today, the 27th of August, 2021, on the occasion of the inaugural webinar in which Professor Ashish Lahiri shall deliver a lecture on Jogesh Chandro Rai Vidyanidhi, a polymath with a vision. The Dean, Faculties of Science, Professor Shottodit Shaha, the Dean, Faculties of Arts and Commerce, Professor Tapun Kumar Bey, and the Registrar, Dr. Joyanko Kishore Nondi, will also be here. Among those who have already joined us, or shall be here shortly via Google Meet, YouTube, and Facebook Live, as well as Betar Vidyashagor, the community radio station of Vidyashagor University, are directors of the different centers of the university, faculty, officers, officials, and other non-teaching staff, research scholars and students, alumni, guests of the university, members of the press, and others. Undeterred by the difficulties for organizing seminars to commemorate the historic event of the nation reaching 75 years of independence, the Honorable Vice-Chancellor Bitta Shagor University, Professor Shivaji Protein Boshu, has guided us towards organizing a series of national and international webinars till the times are congenial for returning to traditional seminars. The series of seminars or webinars is part of the celebration of 75 years of India's independence by Vidya Shagor University, which will also include cultural programs, extension activities, sports activities, art and literature related activities throughout the year of celebration. Thank you. I can see that the Dean Faculties of Arts and Commerce is already here with us. A very well, warm welcome to you, sir, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, ma'am.
নমস্কার দেশের স্বাধীনতার পঁচাত্তর তম বর্ষে বিদ্যাসাগর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় কর্তৃপক্ষ বর্ষব্যাপী উৎসব উদযাপনের কর্মসূচি গ্রহণ করেছেন এই কর্মসূচি রূপায়নে বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ের মাননীয় উপাচার্য অধ্যাপক শিবাজি প্রতিম বসু মহাশয়ের পৌরহিত্যে ভারতের পঁচাত্তর বছর স্বাধীনতা উৎসব উদযাপন কমিটি গঠিত হয়েছে এই মূল কমিটির অন্তর্গত ভারতের পঁচাত্তরতম স্বাধীনতা উৎসব উদযাপনে সেমিনার অথবা ওয়েবিনার কমিটি বিদ্যাসাগর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ে আয়োজিত বর্ষব্যাপী কর্মসূচি আজ উদ্বোধনী সভা বা ওয়েবিনার এই ওয়েবিনার কমিটির পক্ষ থেকে অংশগ্রহণকারী সকল শুভানুধ্যায়ীকে জানাই উষ্ণ অভিবাদন Good morning to all present in this webinar. On behalf of the seminar or webinar committee of 75th Independence Celebration by Bindashagor University, I extend a very warm welcome to all the participants of the inaugural webinar of the year-long series of seminars or webinars for the celebration of 75 years of independence by Bitta Shagor University. The Honorable Vice Chancellor Bitta Shagor University, Professor Shibaji Pratim Boshu, Chairperson of the Celebration Committee for 75 years of Indian independence and patron of today's webinar shall be among us in a short while. The principal speaker of today's webinar, Professor Ashish Lahiri, will also be here very soon. We have come together today, the 27th of August 2021, on the occasion of the inaugural webinar in which Professor Ashish Lahiri shall deliver a lecture on Jogesh Chandurai Vidhanidhi, a polymath with a vision. The Dean Faculties of Science, Professor Shottudit Shaha, the Dean Faculties of Arts and Commerce, Professor Tapan Kumar De, and the Registrar, Dr. Jointu Kishor Nondi, will also be here. Among those who have already joined us, or shall be here shortly via Google Meet, YouTube, and Facebook Live, as well as Betar Bidda Shagor, the community radio station of Bidda Shagor University, are directors of the different centers of the university, faculty, officers, officials, and other non teaching staff, research scholars, and students, alumni guests of the university, members of the press, and others. Undeterred by the difficulties for organizing seminars to commemorate the historic event of the nation reaching 75 years of independence, the Honorable Vice Chancellor Bitta Shagor University has guided us towards organizing a series of national and international webinars till the times are congenial for returning to traditional seminars. The series of seminars and webinars is part of the celebration of 75 years of India's independence by Bindha Shagor University, which will also include cultural programs, extension activities, sports activities, art and literature related activities throughout the year of celebration. Thank you.
আমাদের মাঝে অনেকেই এসে গেছেন অন্তত গুগল মিট প্ল্যাটফর্মে অনেককেই দেখা যাচ্ছে আমাদের ফ্যাকাল্টি আছেন আমাদের অফিসাররা আছেন অফিসিয়ালরা আছেন আর ইউটিউব লাইভ আর ফেসবুক লাইভ এখানেও অনেকে নিশ্চয়ই জয়েন করেছেন যদিও আমি তাদের সরাসরি দেখতে পাচ্ছি না আর আশা রাখি যে বেতার বিদ্যাসা সেখানেও অনেকে শুনছেন আমাদের এই উদ্বোধনী ওয়েবিনার অনুষ্ঠিত হতে চলেছে অতি অল্প সময়ের মধ্যে এবং তারা এখানে আমাদের সঙ্গে আছেন তার জন্য আমি সকলকে ধন্যবাদ জানাই আমি আবার বলি দেশের স্বাধীনতার পঁচাত্তরতম বর্ষে বিদ্যাসাগর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় কর্তৃপক্ষ বর্ষব্যাপী উৎসব উদযাপনের কর্মসূচি গ্রহণ করেছে এই কর্মসূচি রূপায়নে বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ের মাননীয় উপাচার্য অধ্যাপক শিবাজী প্রতিম বসু মহাশয়ের পৌরহিত্যে ভারতের পঁচাত্তর বছর স্বাধীনতা উৎসব উদযাপন কমিটি গঠিত হয়েছে এই মূল কমিটি অন্তর্গত কমিটির পক্ষ থেকে অংশগ্রহণকারী সকল শুভানুধ্যায়কে জানাই উষ্ণ অভিবাদন Once more, a very good morning to all present in this webinar. On behalf of the seminar or webinar committee of 75th Independence Celebration by Vita Shagor University, I extend a very warm welcome to all the participants of the inaugural webinar of the year-long series of seminars or webinars for the celebration of 75 years of India's independence by Vidya Shagor University. The Honorable Vice-Chancellor, Vidya Shagor University, Professor Shivaji Pratim Boshu, Chairperson of the Celebration Committee for 75 years of Indian independence and patron of today's webinar, shall be among us in a short while. We have with us the Registrar with the Shagor University, Dr. Joyanto Kishore Nondi. A very warm welcome to you, sir. The principal speaker of today's webinar, Professor Ashish Lahiri, will also be with us very soon. We have come together today, the 27th of August, 2021, on the occasion of the inaugural webinar in which Professor Lahiri shall deliver a lecture on Jogesh Chandra Rai Bhikta Nidhi, a polymath with a vision. The Dean Faculties of Science, Professor Shottojit Shaha, the Dean Faculties of Arts and Commerce, Professor Tapan Kumar De, and the Registrar, Dr. Joyantu Kishore Nondi, will also be present in this seminar. Among those who have already joined us, or shall be here shortly, via Google Meet, YouTube, and Facebook Live, as well as Beta Vidya Shagor, the community radio station of Vidya Shagor University, are directors of different centers of this university, faculty, officers, officials, and other non-teaching staff, research scholars and students, alumni, guests of the university, members of the press, and others. I welcome everyone. Undeterred by the difficulties for organizing seminars to commemorate the historic event of the nation reaching 75 years of independence, the Honorable Vice-Chancellor Vidya Shagor University 
has guided us towards organizing a series of national webinars till the times are congenial for returning to traditional seminars. A series of seminars or webinars is part of the celebration of 75 years of India's independence by Vidyashagor University, which will also include cultural programs, extension activities, sports activities, art and literature related activities throughout the year of celebration. A warm welcome to you once again. Thank you. আর কিছুক্ষণের মধ্যে শুরু হতে চলেছে বিদ্যাসাগর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় স্বাধীনতার পঁচাত্তরতম বর্ষের বর্ষব্যাপী উৎসব উদযাপনের যে কর্মসূচি গৃহীত হয়েছে তার অন্তর্ভুক্ত ওয়েবিনার এবং সেমিনারের যে শৃঙ্খলা তার উদ্বোধনী এই কর্মসূচি রূপায়নে আমাদের মাননীয় উপাচার্য অধ্যাপক শিবাজি প্রতিম বসু মহাশয়ের পৌরোহিত্যে ভারতের পঁচাত্তর বছর স্বাধীনতা উৎসব উদযাপন কমিটি গঠিত হয়েছে এবং এই কমিটির অন্তর্গত ভারতের পঁচাত্তরতম স্বাধীনতা উৎসব উদযাপনে সেমিনার অথবা ওয়েবিনার কমিটি বিদ্যাসাগর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় আজ আয়োজন করেছে বর্ষব্যাপী কর্মসূচির উদ্বোধনী সভা যেটি একটি ওয়েবিনার এই ওয়েবিনার কমিটির পক্ষ থেকে উপস্থিত সকলকে জানাই উষ্ণ অভিভাবক Good morning to everyone present on this virtual platform shared by Google Meet, YouTube and Facebook Live by way of audio visual transmission and Betan Bitta Shagor, the community radio station of Bitta Shagor University from where the audio of this event is being transmitted live. A warm welcome to all who are present over these four platforms. I welcome all of you once more. In a very short while, we will have with us our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Shibaji Pratim Boshu, who is also the chairperson of the celebration committee for 75 years of Indian independence and patron of today's webinar. We will also have with us Professor Ashish Lahiri, who is the principal speaker of this inaugural webinar, and he shall deliver a lecture on Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidya Nidhi, a polymath with a vision. Those who are already here include our deans, our registrar, faculty, officers, officials, and non-teaching staff of this university, research scholars and students, alumni, guests of the university, 
members of the press and others. The series of seminars which is going to be inaugurated today is part of the celebration of 75 years of India's independence by this university and it will also include cultural programs, extension activities, sports activities, art and literature related activities throughout the year of celebration. Thank you. The Honorable Vice Chancellor. Sir, join for The Honorable Vice Chancellor, Vitashagar University, Professor Shivaji Prati Boshu, has just joined us here on behalf of the seminar or webinar committee of 75th Independence Celebration by Vitashagar University. I extend a very warm welcome to him. Good morning, sir. Thank the Honourable Vice Chancellor is the chairperson of the celebration committee for 75 years of Indian independence and patron of today's webinar. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Dash, for Thank organizing you. this seminar on Jogesh. This is, although this is not a seminar technically, this is a webinar on. Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanithi, a polymath with a vision. I'm looking forward to a great success of this uh, webinar. Uh, has uh, our uh, speaker, I, I think, yes. I yes, think sir, he has just joined. He has oh. just joined. Uh, so the we... principal speaker of today's webinar, Professor Ashish Lahiri, has just joined us. On behalf of the seminar or webinar committee of 75th Independence Celebration by Vidya Shagor University, I extend a very warm welcome to him, sir. Good morning to you too, sir, Professor Ashish Lahiri. I think with this, uh, with uh, the permission of Professor Ujjal Bhattacharya, uh, we shall, and with the permission of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Shivaji Pratim Boshu, we shall proceed towards the technical session of today's please. webinar. May I, please sir? Do. Please, please do. Please do. Uh, so we will begin today's proceedings, for which I invite the proposal of the name of the chairperson of the webinar session. Uh, good morning. So uh, I propose Professor Jayan Jardin. Uh, the chair of the uh, seminar today uh, webinar uh, entitled Jogesh Chandra Ray Vidyanidhi, a polymath with a vision. Good morning, everybody. I <clears throat> most gladly second this proposal. Uh, thank you very much, sir. I accept this position of the person of this session and uh, I request the anchor to continue. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I thank Professor Madhumangal Pal and Professor Ambarish Mukherjee for proposing and seconding the name of Professor Ujjayan Bhattacharya 
as the chairperson of the webinar session. Professor Bhattacharya is the chairperson of the seminar or webinar committee of 75th Independent Celebration by Vitashagor University. Now I request Professor Ujjayan Bhattacharya to kindly take over from here onwards. Over to you, sir, Professor Bhattacharya. Thank you very much, Dr. Das. Uh, <clears throat> I welcome the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Shivaji Pratim Boshu. Professor Bhattacharya, sir, we cannot ah. see you, sir. We cannot see you. Okay. Yeah. Just for a glimpse, okay. we want to. Am I, yes. am I visible now? Yes, yes, yes you, you are visible. visible. Thank yes, you. Thank sir. You. Okay. Uh, I welcome uh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Shivaji Pratim Boshu, and the principal speaker of this session, Professor Ashish Lahiri to this webinar. I welcome the deans of the Faculty of Arts and Commerce, Professor Tapande, and the dean of the Faculty of Science, Professor Shutujit Shaha, to this webinar. I also welcome <coughs> Dr. Jayanta Kishore, the registrar of Vidya Sharod University, to the web webinar. And I also welcome the entire group of faculty, uh, officers, non-teaching staff, guests, and students who are here. I welcome all. Uh, I request now the patron of this webinar, uh, Professor Shivaji Pratim Bosch, Honorable Vice Chancellor, to deliver the inaugural address. Thank you, Professor Bhattacharya, and thank you all. Uh, at the very outset, I would like to uh, you know, congratulate and thank the members of the seminar subcommittee of the 75 years of Indian Independence Celebration Committee of Vidyashagur University uh, for beginning the series of national webinars. This is the first one and other webinars also will follow throughout the year as part of the year long celebration of our independence, which befittingly began with the, you know, on the day of uh, 15th August by plantation of, with the plantation of 10 mahogany plants on the 15th August itself this year. And today it is again my privilege to welcome Professor Ashish Lahiri a prolific scholar and writer on the 19th century Bengal, especially of a multi-dimensional intellectual tradition, and who will also present his today. He will also uh, will also present his uh, lecture on uh, Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanithi shortly after this inaugural program. I ex I acknowledge my thanks to my friends, Professor Shottoli Shah, Dean of Science. Professor Tapon Kumar De, Dean of Arts, Dr. Jayanto Kishor Nondi, the Registrar. I also take this opportunity to express my heartfelt thanks to other committee and subcommittee members of the Celebration Committee who will be engaged in other parallel programs which include organizing cultural programs and competitions such as debates, extempore, drama, etc. competitions throughout the year with the participation of students of the university, as well as in some cases, as you know, of our colleges. In some, some co competitions are all, only meant for that, uh, for our colleges. We are also looking forward to the publication of one compendium of two volumes uh, at the end of the grand finale in 2022 on this, uh, on, 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 the, uh, on the theme of uh, this 75 years of Indian independence. I also welcome and extend my hearty greetings to all the stakeholders of Vidyashakur University, my dear students, my fellow faculties, officers, and non-teaching staff, and also to students, staff, principals, and directors of our affiliated colleges and academic institutions, our guardians, members of the press and civil society, ladies and gentlemen, who are participating in this first national webinar on Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi 
a forgotten polymath of Bengal. But before the star speaker of today's webinar begins, allow me to spell out the reasons, significance and courses of the year-long events that the university has undertaken to organize throughout the year to commemorate the 75 years of Indian independence, which also coincide with the 125th birth anniversary of Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bosch and 150th birth anniversary of Sri Aurobindo. And Aurobindo, as you know, was born on 15th August itself. Friends, I think you will agree with me that 75 years are long years for the history of an independent nation. It gives us sufficient time to ponder over, recollect, and to re-evaluate our progress, achievements, and glories, and also the areas of shortcomings where there is ample scope for further improvement and progress. Our celebration committee, which has been formed by the, and now uh, the EC has also, uh, uh, it, it was the committee have been approved by the uh, uh, Executive Council of the Dashagur University. So this celebration committee has also taken the pledge to understand the meaning of the idea of India in a very comprehensive manner. To do this, we have to be not only aware of the last 75 years since independence, but also the times of the past which led us to the date of 15th August of 1947. And to my mind, the idea of India, of course, enter to Bluetooth, enter radio, in enter. Please uh, kindly uh, I request the organizers. Done, done, sir, done. Uh, so, uh, but you know uh, what I was saying that we are carrying the values of the ancient. Indian civilization, of course, and also some of the traditions and technologies of the medieval India. But what we are today, the shape and state of our dear country and nation of today, where we are standing now, can never be understood if we do not understand, count, if we do not count the contributions and heritages of the modern India, which has arrived after the coming of the British with our days of suffering under colonial imperialism which began in the Battle of Plassey and ended with the tragic story of partition. This India and her people had launched incessant struggles against the colonizers. But colonialism, in its own interest, had also connected us with the economy, politics, culture, and knowledge of the West, and also with other parts of the world, especially after the European Enlightenment of the late 18th century. And with these contacts, besides experiencing the yokes of colonial exploitation in all forms, we have also learned about America's anti-colonial war of independence and also about French Revolution, the Revolution and had imbibed the values like equality, liberty, and fraternity, and also learned about constitutionalism and federalism. The Western education and civilization had enchanted the first generation of Indian pioneers. Although they were critical about some of the maladies of colonialism, but they also accepted the coming of the West or the British as providential. However, since the second half of the 19th century, we see the development of critical outlook among enlightened Indians. Later, they undertook the courses of conflict and later of struggle. Thus, India that we have today had passed through all these courses of history, which we must appreciate and realize in which history our countrymen have made some glorious contributions, which is not, which are not only restricted to political struggles, but to incalculable progress in other fields like education, religious and social reforms, science and technology, modern me medicines, economic thought, administration, art and li literature, drama, dance, composition of songs, I mean composition of new kind of songs, films, games and sports, etc. Thus it becomes our imperative 
not only to reassess and appreciate these developments and evaluate how far we have progressed in the last seven and a half decades, rather this should be an endeavor of going back and forth and appreciate the true meaning of India and its independence. We also have to understand and appreciate the values of diversity of our culture and mechanisms of forging unity with an inclusive mindset. The spirit of inclusion must reflect in the areas of caste, class, communities, language and languages and regions. And we can recall Swami Vivekananda's Bharat Mantra in this context, where he said, Murkho Bharat Bashi, Doridra Bharat Bashi, Brahman Bharat Bashi, Chandal Bharat Bashi, Amar Rakto, Amar Bhai, Tomar Rakto, Tomar Bhai. And we can also recall the great immortal song of Atul Prashat Chen, where he wrote, Nana Bhasha, Nana Mot, Nana Puridhan, Vibhithir Mache Dako, Milano Mohan. The spirit of inclusion should also find reflection in the aforementioned areas. For example, also uh, in, a, in an area like games and sports of today. For ex example, for instance, while we are celebrating, let us celebrate. While celebrating our success in the game of cricket, we should not ignore other sports like javelin throwing, archery, wrestling, boxing, or weightlifting, which have made us so proud. And with this spirit in mind, let us listen to the life and times of Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanithi, scientist, prolific teacher, and author, linguistic reformer, who was associated with both Bongyo Shahito Parishad and Utkal Shahito Samaj, besides being the member of Vigyan Parishad and Udhvid Vidya Parishad. By the way, he was the first uh, botany so far as I know. Uh, correct, uh, Ashish Babu will perhaps uh, correct me if I am wrong. That he was the first botany, uh, he passed with, uh, he is the first botany student who had graduated, who, has, who had graduated and post graduated from Calcutta University. I will not take any more time, you know, the precious time of the seminar. Rather, we will be waiting for today's deliberation. And with these words, allow me to inaugurate this year long series of national webinars organized by university and declare today's open. Thank you, friends. Thank you for your kind patience. Thanks to all. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your very enlightening speech and very encouraging speech. We are all very deeply indebted to you for the ideas that you have transmitted to us. Now, may I introduce the principal speaker of today's webinar? <clears throat> it's a privilege for any institution to host an independent scholar like Professor Ashish Lahiri. Professor Ashish Lahiri is a writer, translator, lexicographer, and an independent researcher in history of science, specializing in science culture interface. He conducted research on Radhanath Shikdar and colonial science under the history of science wing of the Indian National Science Academy, New Delhi. He writes both in English and in Bengali. Professor Lahiri taught history of science at the Asiatic Society, Kolkata, and the National Council of Science, <coughs> National Council of Science Museums. Currently, he is adjunct professor, Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Kolkata. He is best known for his Bengali translation of J.D. Bernal's Magnum Opus science in history. Uh, the list of Professor Lahiri's work is very extensive. May I just uh, select a few and mention here. He had translated into Bengali J.D. Bernal Science in History and also Jack London's White Fang. He also has translated Amurta Shen on Autoshens on interpreting India's past, 
and Ramchandra Guho's India after Gandhi. <coughs> His original Bangla publications include Bigyaner Darshan no Karl Popper, Akhay Kumar Datto, Adhar Rate Akla Puthik, uh, Bigyan no Mata Darsho, Shami Vivekanundo o Bangali Secular Vivek, his English publications include Radhanath Shikdar, Beyond the Peak, then Science in 19th Century Bengal, Caught Between Two Cultures, Radhanath Shikdar and Colonial Science. He is also a lexicographer and has written uh, and has compiled Every Man's English Bengali Dictionary. He is a co editor, Shamshad English Bengali English Dictionary and Junior Illustrated Dictionary, English Bengali. His edited book includes Nakshalwari and After a Frontier Anthology, and he has won awards, Rabindra Puraskar for Science Writing in Bangla in 2010, Brajendranath Bandopadhyay Puraskar by Bengbungiyo Shahito Purishad uh, for his research in 19th century Bengal. He was awarded this uh, was awarded on, in 2011, and Ananda Puraskar 2001 for Every Man's Dictionary English Bengali. The focus of Professor Slidey's work is on science, rationality, and culture. He is a historian of science who has explored many aspects of it, like the emergence of science in Bengal, science in relation to ideologies, religion. Humanism, nationalism, and above all, rationalism. The principal subject of one of his early books is the life and thought of Akhoi Kumar Dotto, a stalwart intellectual of the 19th century who himself was deeply concerned with the questions that Professor Lively discusses. Today, I request you, sir, I request Professor Lively to deliver the lecture on Jogesh Chandra Rai with Danibi. A polymath with a vision. Professor Lahiri, sir. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, at the outset, I must thank uh, Professor uh, Shivaji Pratim Boshu and Professor Ujjayan Bhattacharjo uh, for the troubles that they have taken to invite me to say something about uh, the great polymath, but largely forgotten today named Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi. And on this occasion of the 75 years of independence. Now, as I understand independence uh, or freedom, uh, I would say, it can be of two kinds, freedom from something and freedom to do something. Now, when we look into Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi's life and works, uh, it immediately uh, comes out that he was not much interested in freedom from aspect. That is, he was not much interested in the political freedom uh, snatched uh, thing for himself, for his intellectual uh, development, and for his countrymen, particularly for uh, in, in the realm of the indigenous technology, so that it could uh, it could benefit the people of the country. So he was most uh, interested in these aspects and not in the political uh, movement uh, during the freedom struggle. So this is uh, one uh, peculiar type. I, I don't think it's very much unique. There are many, uh, many more people like that. Uh, I, I think Rabindranath should be included in this category also. But then Jogesh Chandra Raibi then in his uh, chief focus was on science and technology. So with these few words, uh, allow me to uh, open the the PowerPoint slides. Give me just a moment. Just a moment, please. So let me begin. 
Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi was born in 1859 and died in 1956. So almost a century, almost a century. He was two years senior to Rabindranath and he uh, lived 15 years after Rabindranath died. So he was, as I say, uh, a polymath with a vision. Now this polymath, uh, uh, this adjective had been, uh, uh, I, I think it's a noun. So the, 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 the epithet polymath has been applied to many of the intellectuals of this 19th century for that period in which Yogesh Chandra uh, was working. But uh, to none, I think, uh, this fits so much as with Yogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi. No, none other than Acharya Prafullo Chandra Rai called him Bohu Shastrogo. Bohu Shastrogo is the Bengali of polymath. So Acharya Prafullo Chandra Rai himself, uh, he uh, called him by uh, this uh, polymath. So I've taken that from Prafullo Chandra's uh, this epithet. So Yogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi, a polymath, with a vision. I shall uh, uh, go on with the timeline of his life and uh, discussing the things that he did in such particular periods. So this is a somewhat rare picture of Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi. It has been taken from, uh, you, you might be knowing, Ganendra Mohan Dash. He was a lexicographer and he also wrote the Bonger Bahire Bangali. So uh, this picture appears in the Bonger Bahire Bangali uh, of uh, Ganendra Mohan Dash uh, because Yogeshwandu spent uh, the most of his active life in Urissa and that way it was, he was Bonger Bahire. So this is uh, Yogeshwandu Rai Vidyani and this is uh, his, uh, a beautiful picture of the very uh, mature age. Yogeshwandu see his eyes glowing like anything although he had trouble in his eyes all through his life. So he was a polymath. Let us first understand what was he. First of all, he was a science teacher of physical science and botany. And uh, Professor uh, Shubhaji Pratim Bushu was absolutely right when he said that he was the first MA in botany. But he taught physical science also, physics and chemistry. As in those days, it was not uh, very uncommon. So in science teacher, he taught physical science and botany. Then he was a writer of science textbooks in English, Bengali, and Odia. And of course, he was a botanist. He was a popularizer of science. He wrote many, many articles uh, uh, elucidating uh, the difficult points of science in a very interesting and very simple manner. And he was, for me, uh, his most uh, memorable for this uh, work. That is, he was a historian of ancient Indian astronomy. He wrote the book, Amade Jyotish O Jyotishi. And he also gave uh, an English uh, subtitle to that book, which was Our Astronomers and Astronomy. So this, uh, for this, he studied the original uh, books of uh, Baraho Mihir, Aryabhatta, and all these greats, Brahmagupta, and gave detailed accounts. If you read the book, you can have a uh, fairly, fairly uh, comprehensive picture of what the Indian scientists, I do not say Indian philosophers, I would say Indian scientists, what they achieved uh, in the period, say, between 4th uh, fourth, fourth century to 11th century. It is a glorious book. And then he was a lexicographer. He was a writer, he was a com compiler and writer of the first scientifically planned Bengali dictionary. Actually, I'm quoting from Ramendra Shundra Trivedi, who congratulated Yogesh Chandra on being the writer of the first scientifically arranged Bengali dictionary. And it was Hurichoron Bandhavaddai, who is known for his magnum opus, the Bangla Shabdokosh. Hurichoron mentions in his uh, introduction to the great book that he didn't have any role models. And it was only Yogesh Chandra Vidyan in his book that showed him some light. So in that way also, he is a memorable figure. And then uh, he was a linguist and an enthusiast for redesigning Bengali printing types. He was in this aspect a predecessor of Raj Shekhar Boshu. Actually, we have those uh, manuscripts in which he was redesigning the Bengali Juktakras. 
so that uh, what is called today uh, the clear type uh, and he minimized the number of the uh, of the juktakhars of and the uh, number of letters in the alphabet so that it could be easier to print and later rajshekar bosu uh, took this up from him and we know that the uh, first the bengali monotype and linotype were designed by rajshekar bosu but the predecessor of rajshekar bosu was none other than jogesh chandra rai vidyanidhi then he was an archaeologist particularly in the later period of his life he did a lot of work on archaeology particularly of the uh, makura uh, uh, area and he was a researcher in indian religious practices and his book puja parvan uh, puja parvan was written in bengali and uh, i think it was written in the late phase of his life 1951 most probably it is still it is still uh, i should think, think something to which we can refer uh, very easily puja parvan and he was an active enthusiast for people's technology designing and patenting the user friendly machines and pumps i shall come later to some more detail about this and then let us come to the timeline of his life he was born on 20th october 1859 at a village called digra in uh, near arambagh in the hugli district and uh, this uh, is a picture of their of the rise house his father was a munsif and they had uh, they were a, a middle ranking landlord you can say he himself says that we had 60 bighas of land uh, which is not very much uh, by uh, by those days standards but he was a uh, medium landlord and well to do but not very rich so this is the picture of the ancestral house at digra uh, of jogeshwar so his early education is uh, like that he he passed entrance from the bardhaman raj college uh, school rather and then uh, he got the second division only because was he was not very much mindful about the syllabus his interests were too many and still he got second division and got a scholarship also and then he got admitted to uh, the to the great hugli mohsin college this is a very old picture of hugli mohsin college and then in 1882 he passes ba in science stream uh still the bsc had not been uh, come up then it was ba science stream he and he got the first class there and uh, then in 1883 he passes ma in botany in second class now here is uh, i must say that why is such a brilliant student got the second class he writes in his uh, autobiography called aptocharit uh he writes uh, that i was a uh, very uh, devoted um, pupil of avinash chandra datto who was the brother of the great ramesh chandra datto now avinash chandra datto was a teacher of chemistry but uh, he he also knew a lot of physics and he was so fond that is jogesh chandra he was so fond of avinash chandra datto that when he was studying ma and he he often uh, that was in calcutta uh, he uh, went to abhinash chandra datto for lessons and he loved him very much and then suddenly within a span of two or three days abhinash chandra datto he died of cholera and he was so upset yogesh chandra that he said i have no more interest in sitting for the examinations so his uh, friends uh, actually persuaded him to do that and he practically studied for the uh studied in the in the uh, previous 7 days before the examinations and that's why he says that's why i got this second class i think i would not pass at all but he, had he been uh, in a in a proper manner of uh, study he would definitely have uh, received the the first class and then after that he was appointed a lecturer uh, of physical science at ravenshaw college kotak now before that he was uh, he did a small stint at uh, bhadreshwar uh school uh, as a, a headmaster and then uh, within this uh, i think it was not even one year but within this that very short period he, he made a dent and the students and the teachers they were they were so much fond of him that when he said that i was going to ravenshaw college they actually cried said don't leave us 
and the the teachers also said that what will you get there we sh we shall the headmaster the secretary said we shall we shall increase your salary and all that and he was very sad at that so after that he went to the ravenshaw college of kotok this is the picture and here also uh, when he writes in his autobiography that i uh, when i went to the ravenshaw college i was very sad it was a ramshackle building only having a few uh, rooms and nothing uh, more to that. It was he who uh, 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 redesigned the entire building. And for that, he had, had to ask for money from the uh, education department. And his uh, principal, he was uh, Professor Ager, A-G-E-R. Uh, he was very much afraid that the education department would give us, uh, would not give us so much money. And he was angry with Jogesh Chandra. But he was a young man at that time. And he said, OK, let, just leave it to me. And then he, uh, 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 Dr. Alfred Croft, he was the DPI at that time, and he allotted the money. And it was to his planning that this Ravenshaw College became a wonderful place. And after that, uh, after uh, being there, he was uh, here. One thing must be mentioned that when he went to Ravenshaw College, uh, he was. Uh, he was a permanent employee of the uh, education department, but this particular post was temporary because someone had taken leave and he went there uh, in place of that uh, professor. I think he, he was Otul Krishna Rai. Then, uh, so after uh, when Otul Krishna Rai joined, he came back and then he was uh, appointed uh, to teach science at Calcutta Madrasa. So while he was teaching uh, at Calcutta Madrasa. He wrote this first Bengali textbook called Sharol Padartha Vigyan. And this, uh, uh, there is a beautiful anecdote to this, that uh, one day he was traveling by a tram and in front of uh, probably Dasgupta uh, bookstores, uh, he's, he, was, he was traveling with Rajani, uh, Rajani Kanto Gupta the great writer of Shibahi Vidrohed Itihash. So Rajuni Babu said uh, that uh, you read this and he, he, he bought a textbook on physics and gave him. And on coming back, he said, I was almost in tears that these things are being taught to our children at school. There is nothing about physics in, in these books and whatever there is, is placed in such a complex language so that nobody could understand the main principle. They only have to memorize it. So that went into his head and he said, I shall write a book in which no one can memorize the things, but they will understand the principles of physics. And that he did, Sharol Padartha Vigyan, which was a runaway success. And then after that, suddenly, all of a sudden, he was transferred to Chittagong College and he didn't want to go there. But in those, because in those days, uh, Chittagong was very far from these places. So anyway, he went to Chittagong and that college, which was uh, practically in a transitional stage between uh, a higher secondary school and a college. There he taught uh, uh, botany and physics. And there also he became so very popular that the same thing happened that when after a uh, few months or probably a year, when he was coming back, the students would come to his home and they would simply fall on his feet. That's said, don't go us. Who will teach us in, in, in such a manner? We're giving us such examples of physics, of magnetism and such things. And there also, uh, he uh, exposed some religious charlatans. It's, it must be said that he was a very religious man. He was a shakto. And uh, as a scholar, he also did a lot of things in the religious uh, history uh, particularly of Bengal, but at, the, at, at while at Chittagong, uh, or as you say, Chatiga, Chatiga was the uh, pronounced, uh, pronunciation there. So while at Chatiga, uh, he went to see the Sita Kunda there. And it was said that there is a, a pond uh, which, uh, on which there is fire all the time. So actually he exposed the charlatan there, the panda, that there was a simple, there was a uh, gas uh, uh, outlet uh, in, uh, beneath the uh, pond, and it simply, they simply uh, uh, lighted a, uh, any any fire source, and it it uh, became burning. 
So he exposed, but the funny thing is that after being exposed, the panda he looked very sad and he said, "Sir, I would not have, I would not have, uh, I would have confessed to you, sir." And so he became so sad. This Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi that this fellow is going to lose his uh, bread and butter because that charlatan was his bread and butter. So out of his pocket, he gave some money to that charlatan. Anyway, so. Uh, in 88 November, he uh, came back to Calcutta and there uh, he joined the Presidency College, not as a teacher, but as an assistant to Jagadish Chandra Bose. And he himself says in his autobiography that this was a turning point in my life because uh, although I was not a student of physics, I had very, very much interest in physics and I uh, did uh, study physics in my own way, but I didn't have this wonderful uh, apparatus, uh, so, so I could not do these experiments. So when he became the assistant to Jagadish Chandra Bose, he learned how to uh, uh, operate these uh, very uh, sensitive uh, instruments, particularly the camera and the other uh, instruments, including the room cough coil, who, which was necessary for uh, turning on the X-ray machines. So, so he became, in those days, an expert in these things. There were very few people in the in whole India other than Jagadish Chandra Bosu who knew these things. So it was a, he said, for these eight months are a golden period in my life in that I learned uh, from the hands of the master the great things. So, yes. Then in 1889, the uh, Sir Alfred Croft, he brought him to his office, <laughs> called him to his office and said that you are once again being transferred to Ravenshaw College, this time as a permanent professor. And he was very sad that I, I would have to leave my home. And, uh, and then he said that, that it was, uh, I, I was to live there for 30 years. In the next 30 years, he stayed at Kotok as the very respected professor. His uh, designation was professor of physical science because he taught botany. At a time, he taught chemistry. And at some times, he also taught physics. So although botany was his subject, he also taught physics and chemistry. And there, another turning point for which I think he will forever be remembered in the history of science in India, he actually discovered Chandrasekhar Samanto and his works on traditional Indian astronomy. Now, who was Chandrasekhar Samanto? This was indeed a landmark of his life. Uh, but before I go into this detail, let me uh, let me say, let me uh, narrate an anecdote that when uh, Yogesh Chandra came to Calcutta, he was not a not at all a believer in astrology. He was rather an opponent of astrology. But then this Rajani Kanto Gupto, he took him uh, to Bow Bajar, where there was an astrologer, and he surprisingly uh, said certain things, which uh, he was astonished that uh, no one uh, should, not, uh, should know these things other than my mother. So that interested him in astrology. And when he asked that uh, astrologer, Shoshi Acharjo, that uh, where did you learn these things? He mentioned that there was another uh, astrologer in Midnapur, that is uh, Rudronaran Acharjo. And this Rudronaran Acharjo was a disciple of Chandrasekhar Samanto of Orissa. So when he went to Orissa, he asked somebody that, uh, do you know Chandrasekhar Samanto? Oh, not many people knew him. And uh, then somebody said that, uh, are you talking of Patani Samanto? He said, I do not know. Then he found that it was the same person. This Chandrasekhar Samanto was also known as Patani Samanto in, in, in uh, Odisha. And uh, so he, uh, even then, uh, when he asked that, uh, he learned that Chandrasekhar Samanto lived in a faraway place. In those days, it was very difficult to go. It was, uh, I think, uh, 60 miles from uh, Kotak, so in a village, in a very, very uh, poverty-stricken village. So he left that idea. And then certain things happened that there was uh, a movement on the Panjika uh, reform. And Mahesh Chandra Nayaratno, 
who was the principal of uh, Sanskrit College, Calcutta. He came to Kotok and he uh, located Yogesh Chandra <clears throat> and he said that I have heard about this man, this Chandra Shekhar Samanto, that he is not only an astrologer, he is a real sense astronomer because he observes the skies. He has his own instruments made of bamboo. But I do not, uh, but I do, I want to uh, see whether these claims are genuine or not because there are many charlatans in this area. So he gave Chandrasekhar, uh, Jogesh Chandru, the responsibility to find out Chandrasekhar's real uh, knowledge in astronomy. That's how he got uh, involved in the matter. And then this is the picture of Chandrasekhar Samanto. I do not know whether this was. This picture, this photograph was taken by Jogesh Chandra, but in his uh, in his uh, autobiography, after Chodit, he mentions that I took a photograph of uh, Chandra Shekhar Samanto uh, uh, describing this particular apparel. So, uh, in the autobiography, he says that I was surprised to find that uh, uh, that this man who did not know English. He knew only Sanskrit and Odia, but uh, the uh, astronomical constants that he came up with were surprisingly, most of them, not all, there were mistakes, but many of them were, were very uh, proximate to the modern values. How could he come to this? Then he interviewed the, uh, the man and he said the, that I, I uh, since I do not know um, English, I have studied only the a great, uh, uh, great treatises of uh, our Indian uh, astronomers, namely Bhaskaracharya, Surya Siddhanta of uh, 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 Brahmagupta, then Baraha Mihir, and all these great, and he has read all these books in Sanskrit and memorized them, and he followed the instructions that were given in those uh, uh, old books. And then he himself said, Shamanta Chandrasekhar, that when I was uh, following these instructions and uh, trying to see whether the values uh, they say in their books and wh whether the values I observe uh, according to their own instructions, uh, do these things tally? And to my surprise, I found that they do not tally always. So then I improved upon the instruments and the methods of calculation. And then I found that my observations are, uh, are uh, more correct than the, than the old masters. And for this, he wrote a book. He wrote a book called Siddhanta Darpana. Siddhanta. Siddhanta Siromani was the famous book by Bhaskaracharya. So he took that Siddhanta from that a book, Siddhanta Darpana. And this Siddhanta Darpana uh, was written in Sanskrit, but in Odia Lipi. The script was Odia, but the language was Sanskrit. So. Yogesh Chandra became so much interested in this that he learned uh, the Oriya literature. He could speak Oriya, but he could not uh, read or decipher properly. So he learned Oriya and he was already uh, very well acquainted with Sanskrit. But he also improved his knowledge about Sanskrit. And there are some great Sanskrit scholars in Oriya, in, in Odisha, uh, and he went to them and they helped him decipher this uh, Sanskrit uh, book written in Odia Lipi. So what he did, he, he arranged for the uh, printing, for the publication of the book in Devnagari Lipi. So first he transferred the Odia script into Devnagari Lipi and he uh, published it. And as soon as it was published, it created a sensation for those people who knew Sanskrit. Then Jogesh Chandra took on a, 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 a much greater, a much greater uh, responsibility. He said that I will translate this entire book into English and I will make it uh, international. So uh, let me read it out from here. The, the same thing. Chandrasekhar Samanto lived in property in poverty in an obscure village in Orissa knew no other language than Uriya and Sanskrit and had never be seen a telescope in his life before Professor Rai showed him one. Relying absolutely on the traditional Sanskrit text of astronomy, Samanto had devised his own instruments made of bamboo 
for observing the sky and calculating the celestial positions. In the beginning, Professor Rai, well versed in modern astronomy, was rather skeptical of Samantha's achievements. However, upon meeting him and seeing the indigenous methods of calculation, he was awestruck, particularly when the values calculated by Samantha were found to be in close proximity to the modern values. So Samantha had written a book called Siddhanta Darpana in Sanskrit, but in Odia script. Professor Rai mastered Odia and transcribed and printed the book in Devnagari script that made quite an impact on Indian scholars, Indian Sanskrit scholars, and then encouraged Professor Rai embarked upon an ambitious project. He translated the Sanskrit book into English. He wrote a scholarly preface to it, and he sent it to the leading Indian scientists of the time, including J.C. Bose and P.C. Rai, and all of them saw the merit of Samantha's method. And in the preface, Professor Rai compared Chandrasekhar Samantha to the greatest pre-telescope age astronomical observation observer of Europe, that is Tycho Brahe of Denmark. In the those who are acquainted with the history of science, they will immediately recognize the uh, the, the glory of this. The Tycho Brahe, uh, the the king of Denmark, uh, gave him an entire island and uh, enough money to buy instruments. And with these, he came to the, uh, he took many, 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 many observations and which helped Johannes Kepler a little later to come up with his theories. So he was compared, Professor Rice said that uh, before the advent of the telescope, uh, the astronomical observations uh, of uh, Tycho Brahe uh, are at par with uh, Chandrasekhar Samantha's. Then Yogesh Chandra went a step further and he sent the book to the famous science journal Nature, the leading journal of the time. And the review that appeared in Nature a few months later was superlative in its praise for Samantha and of Indian astronomy. I'm quoting from that, from Nature, March 9, 1899. Professor Rai compares the author very properly to Tycho Brahe, but we should imagine him to be greater than Tycho. We get some notion of the success that attended the work of how much it is in one man's power to accomplish if we examine the differences between the value he assigns to some of the constants of astronomy and those in use with ourselves. The error in the sidereal period of the sun is 206 seconds, of the moon, one second, Mercury, 79 seconds, Venus, about two minutes, Mars, nine minutes, Jupiter, an hour, and Saturn, rather more than half a day. So the accuracy with which he determined the inclination of the planets to the ecliptic is still more remarkable. This was written in Nature on March 9, 1899. So that placed Samantha and the traditional Indian astronomy firmly in the world history of astronomy, clearing many misconceptions. How accurate his calculations were have been shown in a paper recently, not very recent, but in 1998 by two scholars of Odisha, their PC Nayak and L. Satpati. And they variously compared the values given by Samantha in his Siddhanta Darpana and with those with pre-modern or modern scientific texts. Uh, I'm not uh, quoting from them, but the reference is there for anyone who wants. You, you can uh, read this uh, paper. But uh, I would only, only uh, throw light on certain uh, special points. These researchers, that is uh, Professor Nayak and Professor Satpati, they make the interesting point that Samantha's picture of the solar system was highly original in that, in his model, Mars, Mercury, uh, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn, they go around the sun, while the sun itself moves around the Earth together with these companions. Thus, he assigned the heliocentric motion to planets while sticking to the geocentric model hypothesis of his Indian predecessors. And Yogeshwanda also writes about that, that uh, when I w went to, uh, I tried to convince him, he, he would not budge an inch. 
He said, no, uh, I, I do not want to change my opinion because I'm convinced that uh, it is geocentric. So that these researchers also point, point out very rightly that while Tycho Brahe received the fullest patronage from the King of Denmark, who awarded him a whole island for making his naked eye observations complete with the best possible infrastructure of the day, Samanto had to languish in an obscure village and to live in poverty. He could not even get uh, three proper meals a day. It is thanks to Jogesh Chandurai that Samanto came to limelight and passed his uh, last days in relative comfort. Now, relative comfort means, let me explain, that when this book was published, Max Muller wrote to uh, Jogesh Chandra Rai that he is a remarkable man and you, you do one thing. Since uh, he lives in poverty, you better write to uh, the, the British Indian government that they should give him at least some allowance. And so he did that, but through the red tape of the government, uh, it was sanctioned only in the, in the, in the last uh, few months of uh, Samantha's life, and he got rupees 50, 5 zero, uh, as a, a monthly allowance from the British government of India. But he, he could enjoy that only for, I think, eight months or nine months after which he died. So he was the last of the Indian Mohicans. Following Rai, Nayak and Satpati very properly placed Samantha's Siddhanta Darpana in the true perspective as the last of the Indian Mohicans of Indian, that is ancient Indian astronomy. For example, uh, Aryabhatta's Aryabhotiya, Lata's Surya Siddhanta, Baraha Mihira's Pancha Siddhantika, Brahma Gupta's Brahmasputa Siddhanta, and Bhaskaracharya's Siddhanta Siromani. So this was one of the, one of the great achievements of Yogesh Chandurai. And if you go to the uh, beautiful book published by the INSA of Indian uh, on uh, history of science in India, you'll find that there is a small but definite chapter allotted to Chandrasekhar Samanto. And it is, there it is clearly mentioned that it was thanks to Jogesh Chandurai that we have discovered such a great traditional uh, astronomer still living in India. So perhaps this should suffice to justify why one should pay more attention to the actual attainments of traditional astronomers based on hard facts, rather than wasting time on useless, speculative, mystical, or metaphysical squabbles. And this is also high time that we should pay tribute to the great polymath Yogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi for unfolding at great pains a little understood area of the pre-telescope age in Indian astronomy and placing it in the proper international perspective. But while doing these things, he was also engaged in other things. As I said, he was a polymath. So he was engaged in writing Puribhasha at Bungiyo Shahitya Purishad, scientific technology. Why scientific? In, in archaeology and in many other subjects, he, uh, particularly in botany, he was writing those Puribhashas or uh, the technical terms. In 1901, he was elected Fellow of the Royal Microscopic Society. This was another area of his activity. Uh, he he uh, studied, uh, he actually uh, imported what is known, uh, what was known as Ross's microscope from England uh, in his uh, laboratory at Ravenshaw College. And there he, out of his own, Made, made so many uh, observations and he wrote down the notes and sent them to this Royal uh, Society, a microscopic society, and they finally elected him as a fellow. And in you know, 1902, he was elected fellow of Royal Astronomical Society because of the publication of this uh, book on Chandrasekhar Samantha. Then in 1903, another glorious thing happened. He wrote his magnum opus, Amade Jyotishi or Jyotish, written in Bengali. And in the bracket, he clearly mentions our astronomers and our astronomy. And this was much acclaimed by P.C. Rai, J.C. Bose, and later Meghnath Shaha. And uh, if you remember, Meghnath Shaha uh, had, a, had a, a very harsh and bitter debate with Anil Baron Rai of Pondicherry, uh, who uh, eulogized uh, early or ancient Indian uh, religious uh, ideas uh, very much. Uh, and 
while countering Anil Baron Rai, Meghna Shaha himself quoted extensively from this book, Amade Jyotishi or Jyotish. It was such a great book. And unfortunately, this book is not available for, I think, at least 70 years now. Uh, I, I was fortunate, I'm, and I must uh, acknowledge my thanks to the late Professor Shubir Kumar Shen, of the Professor of Library Science in Calcutta University. He somehow managed uh, a, a very, very torn copy of that book, and he made a Xerox copy and bound it and presented me with that. Uh, I shall ever remain grateful for this. This is a wonderful book. It needs to be, it needs to be reprinted. And if the uh, Vidyasagar University can uh, take up this job, uh, it will be, uh, it will be a, a yeoman's job, I must say. And then, 11, uh, 1911, uh, he earned the Vidyanidhi title from the Puri Pandit Samaj. Now, this request, actually, he was born Jogesh Chandra Rai. But then, as I said, he, he went over to Kotok and spent uh, 30 years of his life there. And since he made Chandrasekhar Samanto famous in the world, and the Uriya Pandit Samaj, uh, they became uh, very much enamored of him. And they offered him this Vidyanidhi title, and which he said, I shall ever carry on my head. This is the, this is the greatest honor I have lived in, I have uh, gained in my life. So he retired uh, in 1909, 19, and then came to Bakura, where he had built a beautiful house made according to his own building plans. So up to 1919, he had spent 30 years of his life in Odisha. Then he came back to Bakura. And let me show you a picture. Uh, on the left side, you find Dr. Amit Choudhury, who has died of corona uh, in this year, uh, in, the, in, the month of, uh, in, in the month of May, that is 4th May. It was Amit, Dr. Amit Choudhury, who was an electronic engineer specializing in these IT and other things. Uh, he was the joint director of CDAC India. And he was very much interested in Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi. And it is through him that I was initiated into this research. But Amit died uh, on 4th May. And he, and on the right side, if you see uh, Ananda Kumar Rai, who is the grandson of Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi. We are standing, uh, they are standing in front of the, uh, uh, of the building, built according to Jogesh Chandra's own plan in Bakura. So here, after coming back to Bakura, when he was a so-called retirement, he actually never retired from anything. So in 1923, he take, took a patent on Pavan Chakra. Pavan Chakra means Pavan Chakra means Pavan is air and Chakra is will. So, so the, the yes, windmill the. Anecdote goes like that, that uh, he, while at uh, Odisha, he had uh, rented a, a big house, which had a very big garden. And uh, there he found that the, uh, he had appointed a Mali, a very old man, and he used to uh, lift water from the, from the well. And it uh, too, took too much time and he was tired. And so he thought, uh, Kancha used the wind power to do something, and then he patented a Pavan Chakra. He brought the books and he did the designs himself, took the patent, and this was installed in his garden. But then the, there was a tremendous storm uh, which uh, destroyed the thing. He once again uh, he changed the design and then once again put the Pavan Chakra. So uh, the idea was that that old man who was uh, drawing water from uh, below, the entire labor, he did not do that thing. It was the Pavan Chakra that would do uh, the thing for that. So this was the labor saving device that he made. And he took a patent in 1923. And then the very interesting thing is that he, he designed a people's pump in 1925 itself. He designed a simple tube well which he called Dhenki Pump for villagers. The villagers were used to these Dhenkis. And then he corresponds with none other than Raj Shekhar Boshu in order to take the patent. And uh, there was a beautiful correspondence between Raj Shekhar Boshu 
and Jogesh Chandru. Here we find in the handwriting of Rajshikar Boshu himself that he is suggesting certain small changes in the design of this Dheki pump, and uh, he actually did it. So with these small changes, uh, uh, Rajshikar Boshu then uh, uh, sent the thing. Here, here are the changes suggested in the handwriting of Rajshikar Boshu, and then it it was sent for the. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, it was it was sent for the for getting the patent, and what happened? He did get the patent, but uh, nobody manufactured it. And towards the end of his life, I think it was in the 50s after independence. Uh, there is a, a sad and humorous uh, conversation between uh, Kumaresh Ghosh, who was a uh, humorous writer, and he edited a, a magazine called Joshti Modu. And they also had a family business in engineering goods. So Rajshikhar Boshu uh, requested Kumaresh Ghosh uh, to manufacture this thing. And then Kumaresh uh, Ghosh, uh, he, he took the design he, and he said, it is a wonderful design, but it is so simple, so simple to manufacture and so easy to use that if I uh, put it in the market, the people will themselves build it. And so there will be no sale. So how can I, uh, being a businessman, how can I do these things? So Rajshikhar Basu said, yes, if the government comes up and uh, uh, manufactures these things and through the panchayats, if they, if they distribute these uh, easy to use palms, it would be a great uh, benefit for the, uh, for the villagers. But nothing happened as it happens in our country. Nothing good will happen out of this user-friendly technology. So after that, Yogesh Chandra died. So this was one area. Then in his intellectual activities, we find a great thing that in 1928, he corresponded with Sir Sivir Raman uh, on the formation of sunset colors. He had certain specific questions. And Sivir Raman, he gave them, uh, he sent him an eight-page answer, handwritten answer to that query of Yogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi. Then he was, uh, he was a fearless man, uh, not afraid of controversy. So he somehow, but here he was wrong. He created a controversy by writing an article on the life of Chandidas. And he said Chandidas belonged to Bakura on the basis of certain uh, false manuscript that somebody gave him. And the Suniti Kumar Chattopadhyay uh, differed with uh, Jogesh Chandra Rai. But there was no uh, ill will between them. Shunish, Shuniti Kumar was very much respectful to Jogesh Chandra Rai. And here, on the, on the subject of uh, controversy, let me say uh, a, a big controversy that was involved, he was involved in with, was with Rabindranath Thakur. Rabindranath uh, must be knowing that he uh, did not like the Bengali word Krishti uh, as the Bengali of culture. This Krishti word was introduced into Bengali by Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi. Now, Rabindranath says that culture is something refined. So, Sanskriti is the right word for this. But Jogesh Chandra's point was that culture has a second meaning which encompasses every activity of a people. So, if you take the bigger meaning, Krishti is the right word for that. So Rabindranath did not agree. But in this case, I think Rabindranath was wrong. And Rabindranath was so angry <laughs> that even in the Tashet days, if you remember, there is a, is a dialogue. So, that Krishna, he, Krishna, Krishna. Yes, yes, yes. So the, these people are actually uh, uh, polluting Bengali culture. But he was, yes, I, I categorically think that Rabindranath was wrong. And Jogesh Chandra Rai with then it is uh, definition of Krishti was much larger than uh, simply art and literature or refined things. So when you say the refined things of life, it is uh, Sanskriti, but culture in a bigger sense, it is Krishti. So these kinds of controversy, he was never afraid of entering into. And towards the end of his life, at the very end of his life, on 17th April, the Calcutta University conferred delete at a special convocation at Bakura Christian College. The chancellor was then the, the Rajyapal, the governor, Dr. Harendra Kumar Mukherjee, and the VC was the famous Dr. Nirmal Kumar Siddhanto. And both of them uh, went to Bakura 
to confer uh, the title on him. And here is uh, Dr. Harendra Kumar Mukherjee. And here is uh, Nirmal Kumar Siddhanto, the VC, for the period 1955 to 60. And then this is the picture. Very old man. He is receiving the delete certificate. And on 17th April, he received the certificate. And he died on 30th July, 1956. And after that, we managed to forget him beautifully. That is our that is our kind of respect we pay to our great men. So thank you very much. <coughs> Professor Lahiri, uh, thank you very much for the lecture. I must thank you for giving me the opportunity. You have displayed extensive knowledge, insights, and enlightening ideas on a subject of great interest to all who are keen to know about our scientific heritage and also modern scientific developments. Uh, Professor Lahiri's lecture brings to my mind the idea of Renaissance man or universal man. Uh, Leon Battista Alberti of the 15th century had said, a man can do all things if he will. And Leonardo da Vinci was such a man. But the idea of Renaissance man should not remain provincialized in Europe only. Here was a man, Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi, who had been able to establish connections between study of astronomy in India and that in Europe, between Chandrasekhar Siddhanto Shamunto, who wrote Siddhanto Darpun, and Taiko Brahe and Johannes Kepler. At the same time, he was an innovator in popular science. He designed people's pump, Pabon Chakro, and also the scientific plan of his own house. On the other side, he corresponded with scientists like Sri Raman on ideas of high physics. Now, this kind of a man is seldom known to us to ordinary intellectuals or to ordinary students or to ordinary faculty members. It is only because of you, sir, that today we know about this man more extensively than earlier. I probably had heard about Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi, but could not have been enlightened in such a way about his endeavors in science, his ideas, and his practical applications. I would like to go point by point on the different parts of your lecture, because that would just be repeating your lecture. But this is, I think, in sum and substance, uh, what you wanted to convey to us. And I hope there will be some response from amongst the audience on what he has said. May I now request some questions, not too many. Uh, I think three or four questions, uh, which Professor Lahiri can address. Are there any questions before, from Before, uh, Professor Bhattacharya, may I say something? Yes, of course. Uh, before uh, someone asks questions, so I must thank uh, personally for this very, you know, enlightening and very, uh, very mesmerizing uh, kind of lecture delivered by Professor Lahiri today. Not only, I, I think, uh, I think I don't know whether uh, many of us uh, did know before this lecture, only his, we, we knew some of his, uh, uh, we knew of course of his, I've heard his name, uh, uh, but uh, didn't know this much. So it was an enlightening uh, uh, lecture, very enlightening. And uh, very, and his style, uh, the style uh, Professor Lahiri 
I, I know I have heard him uh, before also. It's very, you know, kind of he's uh, speaking based on anecdotes, very interesting kind of. He, he was as if he's, he was storytelling. Uh, uh, so when he was narrating, uh, as if uh, we were in Borpodadu Rashor or something, uh, uh, that, that time that we were uh, listening to it very without losing a minute's uh, attention. So, but uh, if, uh, I, I, I will I'd like to thank him so much, uh, Ashishda, as I call him, Ashish Babu. And please, uh, uh, you uh, continue uh, with this. I, I hope that uh, you are, we will continue uh, uh, with these uh, works. And Vidashankar University will stand by your good work as far as we can uh, come. And I think uh, our, uh, uh, our, you know, the compendium committee or whatever it is, the, uh, uh, the volume uh, uh, publication committee of this uh, subcommittee of this uh, of this uh, 75 year celebration committee of our university should uh, uh, invite you uh, uh, for writing a small piece. Uh, uh, we are not, we will not, not uh, say about 4,000 words or something on Yogesh Chandra or any other uh, topic that you like. And we also, I also think it is imperative, imperative for us that, that we should do something to uh, uh, to uh, keep some, you know, some uh, uh, some of his works. Or we can uh, by reprinting, as uh, uh, Ashish Babu was saying, we can do it. We have a publication division, division sir, uh, Dashnagar University Publication Division. We are dedicated to uh, this kind of work. Uh, earlier, you know, Calcutta University, Vishwabharati University has have done these works, you know. But uh, we are also uh, interested. In, this is a very new organized, new uh, uh, enterprise, Vidya Shagor uh, Pub University Publication Division. Through that, we can reprint, and we should do something. Uh, Professor Bhattacharya and I urge upon all our uh, participants and especially the committee members and the university community that we should do something to preserve the memory of uh, and not only memory but a legacy of yogesh uh, chandra uh, rai vidyali thank you very much i would like to i i would like to say something that regarding the and this legacy aspect uh, i have annotated his uh, atma charit the, and this is uh, right now being printed by uh, Shahito Shangshad. Yes, by uh, the Mujoti Babu, uh, we, we have a good relation with, our university has good relation with. I know that, I know that. So the that's Mujotida, why I informed you. Uh, Mujoti Da has, uh, you know, they have uh, printed and distributed. They are our distributor of Vidyasagar. Vidyasagar, yes. Shavogu. That was also a very painstaking. We have done yes, only yes. after a very painstaking research. Mm -hmm. uh, I will not speak much. So now, uh, Professor Bhattagya, I'm very sorry, but I, 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 I felt uh, that I should say something, and so I delivered. Thank you so much. No, of course, your, your words are always most welcome and most appreciated. Thank you. That is not to be lost sight of. Anyway, uh, any questions uh, from the audience or any points that they would like to raise? Please, uh, you can raise your hand, I mean, through the, there is a device to raise your hand, or you can directly start your question or your or the comment that you want to make. Yes, I am Professor Mihir Kumar Pal from Vidyashagor University, sir. Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much for this enlightening uh, speech. Uh, I do have uh, two specific queries. The queries may be somewhat stray and obvious, but then also I would like to ask you to uh, make clear the concepts. Number one is the relation between astrology and astronomy and the astrology practiced in today's life. This is number one. And number two is the uh, relationship of culture, ethics, 
with that of economics as I am a professor of economics. So those, who, uh, those are the two uh, queries and I want to know your views. Thank you very much. I think Professor Bhattacharya that uh, we should take some questions together uh, then it will be easier for Professor Lahiri to answer. One or two, one or two questions. Okay, okay. Right. Uh, uh, Mihir has already asked, uh, raised a point. Uh, anybody else, please, who wants to say something? I, I see Surat Kumar Malik here. He is from Odisha. He is our Mahi. colleague. Surat, uh, Surat, do you, you want, want to say, say something? something? Uh, thank you, sir. Actually, I don't have to say, but uh, we, we have very regret that Pathani Samant, that is um, uh, Pathani Samant, we call Pathani Samant. We know him as Pathani Samant and Samantha Chandrasekhar. His last life. And we can't recognize you know, uh, the talent he has. Even uh, Radha Nath Rai, the great poet, nature poet of Odisha, he mentioned that the, uh, he wrote that that genius, like Patani Samant has no such a, you know, very tragedy life with poverty, with, you know, other major things. We, we did not give him a right space as Professor Lahiri has, you know, pertinently has mentioned. So that's, that's why I am, you know, I, the agony I feel right now is that such a talented person in Indian astronomy, so we can't, you know, uh, give him proper, uh, you know, space. Thanks to Vidyanidhi, uh, Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi, he, in, uh, he invited, he, I called, he invented him, he discovered him, and he also tried, you know, when to provide him a right space, at least uh, through sending his, some of the writings to nature and other things. Thank you, Professor Lahiri, for this beautiful and extraordinary, excellent speech. Uh, as Professor uh, Sivaji Pratimuswar, Honorable San, Vice Chancellor has mentioned, and we are uh, indebtedly, we are indebted to our organizing committee, especially to our Honorable Vice Chancellor for gifting us this beautiful seminar. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I have nothing to say. Okay. Somebody uh, else? Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. hello. I, 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 I am Professor Saha Shottaji Sans, and actually, I like to thank uh, Professor Lairi for a nice lecture. And actually, uh, I have got to just one single question that uh, uh, Dr. Rai actually has written a book on Sorol Biggan, Sorol Padatta Biggan. Whether that book is still available or not, that I actually want to know. I tell you right away that uh, practically none of his books are available now. And only, only uh, very recently, uh, we are trying to reprint some of his old books. So okay. nothing is available right now. And the, after the Atacharit uh, comes out, uh, I think in September itself, it will be ready. I think there will be a rejuvenation of some studies on Jogesh Chandra Rai Vidyanidhi. That much I can say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, I think uh, Shumohan Manerji, he wants to say something. Shumohan, please go ahead with your question. Shumohan Manerji. Thank you, sir, with uh, regards to the chair and the uh, respected... A bit louder. You? Louder, Re please. Respected speaker and our honorable vice chancellor. Uh, 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 I am really uh, thankful to uh, Professor Ashish Lahedi. Uh, uh, at the same time, I, I would like to add one or two things that can be anecdotal in a sense, because I had a contact with Amit Choudhury Dr. Amit Choudhury, who visited our university, and Amit was planning uh, a, a greater work, larger in a larger perspective, on Vidyanidhi. And we had interactions in his Lake Town, uh, near to his Lake Town residence. And because uh, Vidyanidhi's work has some anthropological uh, significance, this is one very interesting uh, thing I must say that we can explore. Uh, and second thing is that you refer to the word and debate on the Christie. Uh, yes. Would you would you please uh, give a, uh, a, a little more reference on which uh, we can we can have a little discussion on this debate? Actually, uh, yes. Actually, regarding the the Christie, I do not have the reference right now at my uh, hand. I shall send it uh, to Professor Shivaji Pratim Bosu, and he will hand over it to you. 
but regarding the uh, amit choudhury amit was my neighbor i also used to live uh, in in uh, lake town kalindi and it was he who initiated me into all these things so in fact amit was planning in a in a big way to actually uh, come up with an institute itself which will cover all the aspects of yogesh chandra rai vidyan in this work this anthropology his linguistics his uh, science and technology the history of science and even the religious history his puja parvan that book is a famous book it's a wonderful book so amit exactly. did have these ideas but uh, my own special interest is in history of science uh, so i have concentrated on this if someone comes up and some institution uh, is set up to do these things there will be nothing like it i would very much welcome it thank you sir sir uh, i think you can now respond to the other questions and because i uh, nobody uh, oh acha another gentleman dr obhijit rai choudhury he wants to say something please go ahead dr obhijit rai choudhury obhijit rai choudhury can you hear me obhijit rai choudhury is the inspector of colleges of vidyashagar university obhijit you can ask something uh, he has raised his hand shona jacche ha ha bangla te ami ekta khali bolchi ujjan हाँ <laughs> 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 जेगेटर नाम छो खना चटी बी मन पड़े चार लुप्त इतिहास पढ़े खूब चमत्कृत हो मान पुराने रे इतिहास मध्य छोड़ प्रचेषा पावे राजेंद्रिवेदी रामेंद्र सुंदर लक्षणियों चर्चा कर प्रत्येक विशेषज्ञता अर्जन कर बहुशास्त्रज्ञ कथाटा और क्षेत्र जो खाटे रामेंद्र सुंदर क्षेत्र खाटे ए रकम बोधाय प्रपारलि फिट कर एरम को लोक खुजे पाईना क्या ओके शुद्ध विज्ञानी विज्ञान इतिहास विद वुरतिक बाकुड़ार पुरतत्व नहीं और असाधारण क्या आज चिन्हित
हिंदुजम जैसे विर्क तैयारी कर दृष्टिभंगी विचार करूजा पार्वणे देखी विद्या निधि बार बार कर दुर्गा पुजो एथनो रिलीजियस अरिजिन कथा बोलने पुराने जो गुरुत्व देश लोकाचार लौकिक जो ट्रेडिशन गो से हिंदू जतियों हिंदू धर्म पुनरुत्थान सहाज्य करते परसेपन सम्भवत मन पड़े रखार चेष्टा कर हिंदू रिभाइलिजम ठीक रिभाइलिजम नुजे हिंदू अतीत वैज्ञानिक दिको जेगो प्रतिष्ठित जेगो के डिबेट नहीं उन्नी देश ऐतिह्य हिसाब से प्रमोट करते चेहरे एक ही संगे धर्म नामे ऐतिह्य नामे तरह मान जो अनाचार चले सेटारों बिरोधी छें तबुओ सब मिले हमें बोलो और झोंकता क्यों प्राचीन हिंदू ऐतिह्य के पजिटिव ऐतिह्यटा के तुले धरार दिखे एक ही संगे हमें देखो जो विज्ञान संगे जख धर्म को संघात बाधे से सरसर विज्ञान पक्ष निच्चन एक उदाहरण दी बुझे पड़बें जो उन्नी भास्कराचार्य नहीं असामान्य आलोचना कराते उन्नी ग्राविटेशन माध्याकर्षण नहीं आलोचना कर देखा जो भास्कराचार्य माध्याकर्षण कथा बोले अनेक आगे ही निटनर अनेक आगे ही उन्नी निजे प्रश्न तुलचन कि अच्छा तो हमें कि ये दाड़ जो निटने ढेर आगे ही सब जिन बार कर फेले प्रश्न तोलार उद्देश्य हे से ही समय अर्थात ये ऊनविंश शतर शेषर दिखे मैं मोटामुटी विवेकानंद जो समय मानुष तक तरा कारतवर्ष के ग्लोरिफाई करारे ये कि दाबी कर स्वयं विवेकानंद दाबी कर निटन जन्मार हजार हजार बचर आगे माध्याकर्षण तत्व जानत ये जोगेश चंद्र विवेकानंद नाम करें क्यों परिष्कार भूल तर कारण एक फिलोसफिकल आईडिया प्रेजेंट करा और से वैज्ञानिक तथ्य हिसाब से एक्सपेरिमेंटाली एवं मैथमेटिकाली तरह एक रूप देवा दुटोर मध्य आकाश पताल अंतर हमें कोट कर दर मध्य आकाश पताल अंतर सूतरा जरा बोलें सब ही हिंदू अतीते छो ता भूल बोलें दृष्टिभंगीटिकल क्रिटिकल दृष्टिभंगी सब क्षेत्र मध्य छो जमन हिंदू मुसलमान सम्पर्क नहीं आत्मचरित लिखन जो आजकल सुनी हिंदू मुसलमान सम्पर्क मान उ आत्मचरित लिखन नाइनटीन थार्टीज बोध है थार्टी सिक्स लिखन उन्नी आजकल सुनी हिंदू संगे मुसलमान मारामारी मुसलमान संगे हिंदू मारामारी उन्नी बार छोट बल्ले सब तो जानत ही ना बाड़ी उदाहरण दिए दिए बमुक बाड़ी गए खेतम उन्नी बाड़ लोक छें तर उन्नी एम कि जो उन्नी कटके तक और उड़ीषार को थियोलजिकल कन्ट्रोवार्सि देखा दिए अपनी डिसाइड कर विषय की जानी ना सर अपना जो दृष्टिभंगी अपनी आर एक ही संगे ओखान जो हिंदू ताई सनतन धर्म सनतन धर्म के आज के जुग अनुजी बदले ना उचित क्या ये एक कन्ट्रोवार्सि से पंडित नहीं गेलें से दृष्टिभंगी ओटा छो जो तो विषय जानी ना कि उभय पक्षे बक्तव्य सुनब विषय पढ़ाशनो करब कर लजिक जा लजिकर ओपर निर्भरता यो आधुनिकता
তো কাজী উনি নিশ্চয়ই ধর্ম বিশ্বাসী ছিলেন উনি প্রাচীন হিন্দু গরিমায় বিশ্বাসী ছিলেন কিন্তু সেটা কুসংস্কারের ব্যাপার ছিল না সেটা লজিকের ওপর জ্ঞানের ওপর অবজেক্টিভ তথ্যের ওপর নির্ভরশীল ছিল যোগেশচন্দ্র রায় বিদ্যানিধি বহু দীর্ঘ দীর্ঘায়ু ছিলেন দীর্ঘ জীবন বেঁচেছিলেন আহ কৌশিকী দাসগুপ্ত যেটা জিজ্ঞেস করলেন যে হিন্দু ধর্মের সাথে বিজ্ঞানের ডায়ালগ আপনি যে যা উত্তর দিলেন সেটা তো একটা দিক গেল তার মানে যথেষ্ট হয়তো আগ্রহ ছিল হিন্দু পুরনো ভারতীয় বিজ্ঞান সম্পর্কে কিন্তু এই সময়টাও ধরুন ফিজিক্সে একটা বিরাট পরিবর্তনের সময় আপনি যে মাধ্যাকর্ষণ শক্তির কথা বললেন উনি যেভাবে জানতেন নিউটনের মাধ্যাকর্ষণ শক্তি উনি যেভাবে আপনি যেটা বললেন যে বিবেকানন্দ লেখা সত্ত্বেও উনি বললেন যে যুক্তি যুক্ত ভাবে এটা ঠিক নয় বিবেকানন্দ যা বলেছিলেন কিন্তু এই যে মাধ্যাকর্ষণ শক্তি সম্পর্কে ধারণাটা পাল্টাতে আরম্ভ করলো স্পেশাল জেনারেল থিওরি অফ রিলেটিভিটি তারপরে আইনস্টাইনের যে তত্ত্ব কোয়ান্টাম ফিজিক্স এইগুলো যে ডেভেলপ করলো এ সম্পর্কে তার কি আগ্রহ ছিল এবং কি তিনি আপনি বললেন সি বি রমনের সাথে তার করেসপন্ডেন্স ছিল কিন্তু ধরুন সে সময় সত্যেন বোস ছিলেন যিনি আইনস্টাইনের সাথে করেসপন্ডেন্স করেছিলেন বা কোয়ান্টাম ফিজিক্স জেনারেল থিওরি অফ রিলেটিভিটি এই সম্পর্কে তিনি কি আগ্রহ দেখিয়েছিলেন এটা একটু জানতে ইচ্ছে আচ্ছা আমার উজ্জয়ন আমার মনে হয় তোমার প্রশ্ন তারপর কিন্তু মিহিরের প্রশ্নটা তলায় চলে যাচ্ছে খুবই উৎসাহী ছিলেন কিন্তু এই নিয়ে তার কোন বিস্তারিত লেখা নেই কিন্তু কিছু কিছু মন্তব্যের মধ্যে যেমন তিনি বলছেন একটা লেখাতে ওই রামেন্দ্র সুন্দর সম্বন্ধে বলতে গিয়েই বলছেন যে এখন তো মানে রামেন্দ্র সুন্দর তো মারাই গেছেন উনিশশো উনিশে উনি লিখছেন ওটা বোধ হয় উনিশশো কুড়ি একুশ সালে যে এখন তো ফিজিক্স অনেক বদলে গেছে এখন ফিজিক্সে নিউটনের যে মাধ্যাকর্ষণ শক্তি যে মাধ্যাকর্ষণের ধারণা গ্রাভিটেশন তাতেও অনেক পরিবর্তন এসেছে যদিও তার মূলটা অটুট রয়েছে এই যে যদিও তার মূলটা অটুট রয়েছে অথচ মাধ্যাকর্ষণের কনসেপ্টটা বদলে গেছে এটা কিন্তু আইনস্টাইনের থিওরি অফ রিলেটিভিটি নিয়ে বলা আইনস্টাইন তো গ্রাভিটেশনকে অস্বীকার করছেন না কিন্তু গ্রাভিটেশনের এক্সপ্লানেশনটা বদলে দিচ্ছেন তার ওয়ার্কিংটা অন্যভাবে ব্যাখ্যা করছেন পক্ষান্তরে আপনি যেটা বললেন কোয়ান্টাম মেকানিক্স যেটা আইনস্টাইন নিজে মানতে পারেননি তারা কিন্তু কিন্তু মূলটাই বদলে দিয়েছিল একেবারে ফিজিক্সের যে বেসিস যে প্রিন্সিপাল অফ মেজারমেন্ট এই প্রিন্সিপালটাকেই কোয়ান্টাম মেকানিক্স চ্যালেঞ্জ করেছিল সুতরাং এখানে তিনি সূক্ষ্মভাবে ইঙ্গিত দিলেন যে এই যে নতুন তত্ত্ব আসছে এটাতে ওই এটা গ্র্যাভিটেশনের থিওরির একটা পরিবর্তন এসছে সেটা আরও ব্যাপ্ত হয়েছে কিন্তু মূলটা অক্ষুণ্ণ তার মানে মূলটা যে অক্ষুণ্ণ থাকবে না ওই কোয়ান্টাম মেকানিক্সের দ্বারা এই ব্যাপারটা সম্বন্ধে তিনি সচেতন ছিলেন কিন্তু এই নিয়ে কোনো বিস্তারিত লেখা ওনা আমি পাইনি অত বলতে পারি না এতটুকু বলার মতো অধিকার আমার নেই আমি শুধু এইটা বলবো এইটা কিন্তু বহুকালের পুরনো প্রবলেম এটা আমাদের দেশ বলে নয় বা আমাদের সভ্যতা বলে নয় ধরুন এ তো ব্যাবিলন থেকে চলে আসছে তারপরে ধরুন এমনকি ইসলামিক এতে তাদের যদিও ইসলামে এটা এটার বিরুদ্ধে কথা বলা আছে কিন্তু আমরা দেখছি যে এই বাগদাদে সেখানে যে সুলতানরা তারা প্রতি হাত তারা ওই অ্যাস্ট্রোলজি মানে জ্যোতিষ জ্যোতিষীদের সাহায্য ছাড়া কোনো কিছু করতেন না কখন কোন জায়গায় যাব কখন যুদ্ধ করব কখন চাষ করব। এখন এইটা করতে গিয়ে 
এই যে জ্যোতিষীরা মানে এটাকে রামেন্দ্র সুন্দর এবং যোগেশ সুন্দর দুজনেই বলেছেন ফলিত জ্যোতিষ ফলিত জ্যোতিষ হচ্ছে অ্যাস্ট্রোলজি আর গণিত জ্যোতিষ মানে বেসড অন ম্যাথমেটিক্যাল ক্যালকুলেশন সেটা হচ্ছে অ্যাস্ট্রোনমি তো অ্যাস্ট্রোনমি হচ্ছে গণিত জ্যোতিষ আর অ্যাস্ট্রোলজি হচ্ছে ফলিত জ্যোতিষ দুটোর মধ্যে ডিফারেন্সটা এই যে মানুষ যখন একেবারে প্রথমে গ্রহ তারা নক্ষত্র দেখছে সবই তো বিস্ময়কর তখন তাদের মনে হচ্ছে যে এই যে এক একটা বিশেষ সময় চাষ করলে আমি ভালো ফল পাচ্ছি অন্য সময় পাচ্ছি না বা অন্য নানান ঘটনা এর থেকে তাদের একটা মনে ধারণা জন্মায় যে আকাশের ওই গ্রহ তারকার চলনের সঙ্গে আমার আমি মানুষ হিসেবে আমার ব্যক্তিগত জীবনের অনেক ঘটনা জড়িত কিছুকাল পরে যখন সায়েন্স আরো ডেভেলপ করলো তখন কিন্তু অ্যাস্ট্রোনমি আর অ্যাস্ট্রোলজি একদম আলাদা হয়ে গেল যে অ্যাস্ট্রোনমির চর্চা যারা করলেন তারা ওই গ্রহ তারকার যে চলন তার যে মেকানিক্স তার বৈজ্ঞানিক দিকটা নিয়ে চর্চা করতে লাগলেন আর কিন্তু তারা একই সঙ্গে এই কথা বললেন যে আমাদের শাস্ত্রে মানে গণিতে বিজ্ঞানে এমন কিছু নেই যাতে করে বলা যায় যে ওইগুলো মানুষের ব্যক্তি জীবনের নানান ঘটনাকে প্রভাবিত করতে পারে এই যে আলাদা হয়ে গেল যোগেশ চন্দ্রই বলছেন ওর ওই আমাদের জ্যোতিষী ও জ্যোতিষ বইতে এই আলাদা হওয়াটা কিন্তু আমাদের দেশে সেভাবে হয়নি যে আধুনিক বিজ্ঞানের বিকাশের ফলে যে ওয়েস্টার্ন ইউরোপে যে এই যে সায়েন্টিফিক রেভলিউশনটা হলো নিউটনের পরে তার আস্তে আস্তে কিন্তু এই দুটো অ্যাস্ট্রোনমি অ্যান্ড অ্যাস্ট্রোলজি কমপ্লিটলি দুটো আলাদা স্রোত হয়ে গেল আমাদের এখানে কিন্তু এই দুটোর মধ্যে সম্পর্কটা রয়ে গেল ফলে এখানে অনেক সময় দেখা যায় যে যারা ফলিত জ্যোতিষ অর্থাৎ অ্যাস্ট্রোলজির চর্চা করছেন তারা একই সঙ্গে অ্যাস্ট্রোনমির চর্চা করছেন এটা কিন্তু ইসলামিক ওয়ার্ল্ডেও ছিল আমরা বাগদাদে সেখানে দেখতে পাই এই নিয়ে জিম আল খালিলির একটা অতি সুন্দর বই আছে তিনি দেখাচ্ছেন যে তারা ওই ওই যে অ্যাস্ট্রোলজিক্যাল যে গণনা যে ভবিষ্যৎবাণী এগুলো করবার জন্য তারা ওই সুলতানদের কাছে বলছে যে আমাদের একটা বড় করে অবজারভেটারি বানিয়ে দিন এর জন্য এবং তিনিও দিচ্ছেন তাতে করে তারা অ্যাকচুয়াল স্টার্স অবজার্ভ করতো তাতে করে অ্যাস্ট্রোনমির উপকার হতো অ্যাট দি সেম টাইম তারা গিয়ে বলছে যে এই অবজারভেশনের ভিত্তিতে আমরা জানতে পারছি যে অমুক দিন আপনার রওনা হওয়াটা সেফ নয় তো এই যে পরবর্তীকালে এটা আলাদা হয়ে গেল ভারতবর্ষে কিন্তু এই আলাদা হওয়াটা সেভাবে হয়নি এবং বরাহমিহিরের লেখা ওই যে তার যে পঞ্চসিদ্ধান্তিকা ছাড়াও তার যে অন্য বই আছে বরাহমিহিরের যে বৃহৎ সংহিতা তাতে বৃহৎ জাতক এইসব বইতে এই যে দুটো জিনিসকে মিলিয়ে রাখা হয়েছে আজও ভারতবর্ষে এখনো এই দুটোকে মিলিয়ে অনেকে চর্চা করেন কিন্তু এটা এটা পুরোপুরি সায়েন্টিফিক নয় এবং যোগেশ চন্দ্র ওয়াজ অ্যাওয়ার অফ দ্যাট তিনি ওই বইয়ের শেষের দিকে গিয়ে বলছেন এই প্রশ্নটাই তুলেছেন যে দুটোকে কি এক করে দেখা যায় বিজ্ঞানীরা বলছেন যায় না উনি একটু খোলা মনের লোক ছিলেন উনি বলছেন কি আমি মানছি যে দুটো আলাদা জিনিস কিন্তু বিজ্ঞান তো এক জায়গায় থেমে নেই উনি বলছেন যে ধরুন সকলেরই এরকম অভিজ্ঞতা আছে যে ধরুন জ্যোতিষীর কাছে গেলে যদি পঞ্চাশটা গণনা করতে বলা হয় তার মধ্যে দুটো মিলে যায় তো দুটো তো মিললো দুটো যদি মেলে উনি বলছেন তাহলে এর মধ্যে কিছু সায়েন্স নিশ্চয়ই আছে এইটা আবার রামেন্দ্র সুন্দর ত্রিবেদী প্রচন্ডভাবে প্রতিবাদ করেছিলেন আপনারা হয়তো জানেন যে রামেন্দ্র সুন্দর ত্রিবেদীর একটা লেখাই আছে ফলিত জ্যোতিষ নামে তাতে উনি সায়েন্টিফিক প্রিন্সিপালটা ব্যাখ্যা করছেন যে ওরকম দশটার মধ্যে দুটো মিললে টোয়েন্টি পারসেন্ট ইট ডাজেন্ট ম্যাটার যে কোনো জিনিস ওরকম মিলে যেতে পারে এমনকি চল্লিশটা মিললেও কিছু এসে যায় না কিন্তু যদি দশটার মধ্যে সাতটা মিলে যায় মানে একশোর মধ্যে সত্তরটা পঁচাত্তরটা মিলে যায় তখন অবশ্যই মানতে হবে এর মধ্যে কিছু বিজ্ঞান আছে তো উনি ওই জন্য আহ্বান করেছিলেন আমি সমস্ত জ্যোতিষীদের বলছি আপনারা একটা লং কুড়ি বছরের একটা প্রোগ্রাম নিন যে এই মুহূর্ত থেকে যত শিশু জন্মাচ্ছে প্রত্যেকের জন্ম সময় লক্ষ্য করুন এখনই প্রেডিক্ট করে দিন আগামী কুড়ি বছরে তাদের জীবনে কি কি হবে এবং আগামী কুড়ি কুড়ি বছর তাদের মনিটার করুন কুড়ি বছর পরে গিয়ে দেখুন কতটা মিলেছে কতটা মেলেনি যদি ওই ফিফটি পার্সেন্ট মেলে যদি ফর্টি পার্সেন্ট মেলে আমি সেটাকে গুরুত্ব দেব না যদি দেখি সেভেন্টি মিলেছে আমি একশো বার স্বীকার করব যে জ্যোতিষ একটা বিজ্ঞান এই দৃষ্টিভঙ্গিটা নিয়ে রামেন্দ্র সুন্দর এবং যোগেশ চন্দ্রের মধ্যে একটু মতভেদ ছিল যোগেশ চন্দ্র একটু ফলিত জ্যোতিষের দিকে ঝুঁকেছিলেন কিন্তু রামেন্দ্র সুন্দর একেবারেই বিশ্বাস করতেন না ফলিত জ্যোতিষে আমি এই বিষয়ে আমার মনে হয় এর বেশি আর এখন আলোচনা করার সুযোগ নেই আর যদি কিছু থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ স্যার থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ স্যার ফর ক্লিয়ারিং দ্য কনসেপ্ট and i would also like to thank our vice chancellor 
to um, take this uh, short to make these short of programs and i also thank the organizers who have organized this uh, seminar webinar in a sense and thank you everybody thanks thank you jodi amader ombodis da ba senior de niche theke jodi thaken jodi kichu bolen tale tara bolte pare tar por amader amar mone hoy we can go for the vote of thanks नमस्कार माननीय उपाचार्य महाशय के माननीय अध्यापक आशीष लाहिड़ी महाशय के गत एक घंटार बसि समय घटल क्षेत्र से शा मान जाना मान इंगरेजी जाके बोले लिसनिंग इज लार्निंग से घटल खूब ही अल्प जानतम ऋद्ध हलम समृद्ध हलम से अशेष धन्यवाद अपना के शुद्ध एक प्रसंग अपने चाहबो अपनी खूब चमत्कार भाव जो रवींद्रनाथ संस्कृत शब्द व्यवहार कर योगेशचंद्र राय विद्यानिधि कृष्टि शब्द व्यवहार करो बृहत्तर अर्थे बृहत्तर परिसर बोझाते जदिव रवींद्रनाथ से मे नीटी जानते चाहिए कृष्टि शब्दार ओपर जोर दिशन योगेशचंद्र से कारण कृष्टि संगे कर्षण शब्द चित्रकला गान बजना साहित्य मेटेरियल कलचारूड करते चाहन से कारण छोटे शुद्ध जानते चाहिए ठीक कारण उन्नी मानुषे समग्र जीवन जत्रा जेखने चाषबास अंग गान गावर अंग कारखाना मानस पवन चक्र तैरिटर अंग हाउ उ लिव हम जीवन जापने जाटाई कृष्टि सब मिलिए मन हम मान खुब चमत्कार भाव आशीष दा रवीन्द्रनाथ दासे कृष्टि कृष्टिर संगे खटखट कर चेस्टा कर रवींद्रनाथ के चर्चा रवींद्रनाथ गांधी तो जी होक मैं नतुन एक संस्कृति तो मध्य मन पड़े भाषाचार्य सुनीति चट्टोपाध्याय संस्कृति की संस्कृति चमत्कार बी लेखा सुनीति बाबू उन्नी संस्कृत दिखे गेलें उन्नी संस्कृति धारणा रवींद्रनाथ इनफ्लुएंस होना 
বিচারের জায়গাটা রয়েছে তবে আমি দেখছি যে অ্যান্থ্রোপোলজি তো মূলত মানে সোশ্যালজি অ্যান্থ্রোপোলজি তো ওরা তো মূলত কালচারে স্টাডি করে তো এরা অনেক ক্ষেত্রে সংস্কৃতি কথাটা ব্যবহার করে আমার নিজের মনে হয় এইসব ক্ষেত্রে কৃষ্টি ব্যবহার করাটা এই আলোচনাটাখানি সময় নিয়ে একটু জানতে চাইছি বা ইয়ে করছি ধরুন এখন বলা হয় কৃষি সংস্কৃতি শিল্প শিল্পর সঙ্গে শিল্পের জন্য যে তো এইগুলি নিয়ে আসলে বাংলা ভাষা এবং ভারতীয় ভাষাতে এই ব্যাপারগুলো আনা বা ইংরেজি ভাষাতেও হয়তো অনেক সমস্যা আছে কৃষি ওরা কি করেন আমি জানি না সুমোহনরা এখানে রয়েছে ওরা বাংলাতেও যারা চর্চা করে বা এখানে মইনুদ্দিনকে দেখতে পাচ্ছি আমাদের সোশ্যালজি বা আরো অনেকে আছেন যে সংস্কৃতি এবং ওরা বোধ হয় সংস্কৃতিটাই ব্যবহার করে এখন আমি জানি না কৃষ্টি কথাটা ব্যবহার করে আর বাইরে কিন্তু সংস্কৃতি ব্যবহার করিস মইনুদ্দিন সংস্কৃতি ব্যবহার করিস কিন্তু সেখানে যেটা বলছে যে চাষবাসের ওটাকে কি করিস তোরা মানে আমি জানতে চাইছি একজন রাখছি এবং যোগেশ বাবুর কাছে তো আমার আর রাখার কোন আমাদের আমার জন্মের আগে তার মৃত্যু হয়েছে তার কাছে তার প্রশ্ন রাখার সুযোগ নেই কৃষি কৃষ্টি যদি আমি বোঝাতো কৃষকের যে কৃষ্টি তো কৃষি কৃষ্টি শুনতে না খুব কানে একটা কিরকম লাগ বা অন্য একটা কিছু মানে এই আমার মনে হয় এর একটা এস্থেটিক ভ্যালুটাও তো অনেক সময় তৈরি হয় মানে আমাদের কান কোনটা গ্রহণ করছে বা নিতে পারছে সেটাও অনেক সময় হয় ঠিকই এটিমোলজিক্যালি স্পিকিং ওইটাই ঠিক আপনি যেটা বলছেন বা এখানে জানি না এরা রয়েছে ইংরেজির লোকেরাও রয়েছে জলি নিজে রয়েছে বা আরো অনেকে আমার একটা জিনিস মনে হয় ধরুন সৃষ্টি আমি কি হরপ্পান সংস্কৃতি বলবো আমার মনে হয় বাঙালিরা এবং অন্য জায়গায় কিন্তু কৃষ্টি কথাটা অনেকদিন চালু ছিল বোধ হয় আগে ছিল কিনা জানি না ওরা কৃষ্টি বলে মানে বলে ওরা ইত্যাদি একটু দেখবেন আমি জানি না এতটা আমার জ্ঞান নেই ওরা বোধ হয় কৃষ্টি কথাটা না আমার আমার নিজের একটা মানে জাস্ট একটা মানে হাঞ্চ এরকম কোন আমি প্রমাণ পাইনি সেটা হচ্ছে উনি যেহেতু ওড়িয়াটা খুব ভালো জান মনে হয় সেতুবন্ধনে যেরকম বালি দিচ্ছিল যদি সামান্য কিছু করতে পারি আমাদের খুব ভালো লাগবে একটা দুটো বই তো পাবলিশ অবশ্যই করতে পারি খুবই মনোজ্ঞ আলোচনা যাকে বলে বাংলায় হয়েছে এবং চমৎকার আজকে সবাই কিন্তু খুব এনজয় করেছে এবং 
এটা এরকম নয় যে একজন ভাইস চ্যান্সেলার আছেন বলেই সবাই রয়েছে আপনার বক্তৃতার টানেই সবাই ছিল তো এবং এতক্ষণ পর্যন্ত এখনো সিক্সটি ফোর দেখতে পাচ্ছি এত আলোচনার পরে নাইনটির ওপরে এবং তাছাড়া ইউটিউবে এটা স্ট্রিমিং হচ্ছে আপনার বক্তৃতাটা আমাদের বেতার বিদ্যাসাগর বলে একটি কমিউনিটি রেডিও স্টেশন আছে এটা আমাদের আগেকার ভাইস চ্যান্সেলারের আমলেই তৈরি হয়েছিল প্রফেসর রঞ্জন চক্রবর্তীর সময় সেখানেও এটা রিলেট হচ্ছে এবং সেটা শুনছে একটা বড় অংশের মানুষও সেটা শুনছে তো আমি আর কিছু বলবো না প্রফেসর ভট্টাচার্যকে বা সভার কার্য সম্পাদক করার কাছে হচ্ছে আমি জারি দাসকে বাকি সবার বাকিটুকু সঞ্চালন করার জন্য বলছি এবার জয়ন্ত কিশোর নন্দী রেজিস্ট্রার উনি বোর্ড অফ থাকছেন সেটা আপনি অ্যানাউন্স করেন থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ স্যার আই নাও রিকোয়েস্ট আওয়ার রেজিস্ট্রার ডক্টর জয়ন্ত কিশোর নন্দী টু অফার দ্য ভোট অফ থ্যাঙ্কস থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ রেসপেক্টেড প্রফেসর শিবাজি প্রতিম বাসু অনারেবল ভাইস চ্যান্সেলর বিদ্যাসাগর ইউনিভার্সিটি প্রফেসর আশিস কুমার লাহেড়ি ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্ট রিসার্চার ইন দ্য হিস্ট্রি অফ সায়েন্স প্রফেসর সত্যজিৎ সাহা ডিন অ্যাক্টিং ফ্যাকাল্টি অফ সায়েন্স বিদ্যাসাগর ইউনিভার্সিটি প্রফেসর তপন কুমার দে ডিন অ্যাক্টিং ফ্যাকাল্টি অফ আর্টস অ্যান্ড কমার্স বিদ্যাসাগর ইউনিভার্সিটি প্রফেসর উজ্জয়ন ভট্টাচার্য প্রফেসর ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ হিস্ট্রি অ্যান্ড চেয়ারপারসন অফ দিস ওয়েবিনার প্রফেসর মধুমঙ্গল পাল ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ প্রফেসর ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ অ্যাপ্লাইড ম্যাথামেটিক্স ডক্টর জলি দাস প্রফেসর অম্বরেশ মুখোপাধ্যায় আদার ডিস্টিংগুইসড and invited guests dignitaries all heads of various departments officers faculty members non teaching staff members research scholars press and media personnel all members and volunteers of various organizing committee my dear students ladies and gentlemen a very good afternoon to all of you it is my great pleasure and privilege to to be in front of you to propose vote of thanks on this auspicious occasion of the web- webinar on jogesh chandra rai vidyanidhi a polymath with vision as we all know that india enters into the 75th year of its independent independence from august 15th this year and the university is celebrating the year long celebrations to commemorate 75 years of indian independence through various programs webinars sports cultural events etc it is a great pride for us that we are organizing such kind of webinar in a broad manner during this challenging pandemic situation it is a matter of immense pride for us to convey our gratitude to our honorable vice chancellor professor shivaji pratim basu for his encouragement guidance and providing a stimulating environment to organize such webinar during this pandemic period sir we convey sincere thanks to you for your gracious presence at this webinar and for your interesting and thought provoking inaugural address sir you hardly need any introduction you have made all of us proud by your distinguished work in numerous capacities our enormous respect and thanks to you sir we are deeply grateful to professor ashish kumar lahiri a lexicographer translator 
and an independent researcher in the history and the philosophy of science specializing in the science culture interface for his pertinent address indeed your lecture hold the audience spell bound i take this opportunity to express our profound thanks and gratitude for all that you have done to enrich this webinar thank you very much sir we are very much thankful to professor tapan kumar de dean acting faculty of arts and commerce with the sagar university professor sotit saha dean acting faculty of science with the sagar university professor ujjan bhattacharya professor department of history and chair person of this webinar professor madhumangal pal professor department of applied mathematics professor ambarish mukhopadhyay professor department of political science for their gracious presence on this occasion and extending all support in organizing this webinar thanks to you all we would also like to thank to the organizing team members heads of various departments teachers officers other staff members and volunteers of bidya sagar university and also our technical team members for their energetic and tireless tireless efforts towards organizing this entire program thanks to our all such colleagues we all, all we would also like to express our sincere thanks and gratitude to the entire audience for their for their gracious presence without which this program could have not been a grand success we take this opportunity to thank to all press and media personnel who are supporting us through covering their events in their esteemed media continuously and we are sure that this event will also get prominent place in their respective print and electronic media at last but not the least we must mention our deep sense of appreciation for those who have supported us directly or indirectly to take this program towards a grand success thank you very much once again to each and every one thank you thank you uh, joanto so now i i think it's time to say goodbye for the time being uh ye ujjain yes sir yeah please please uh, announce that and give it a close uh thank you sir professor ashish lahiri and thank you thanks to the honorable vice chancellor shivaji pratim boshu and uh, it was an extremely enthralling session with many exchanges very deep exchanges i hope it continues but for today we conclude this webinar with thanks to each and everybody who have attended participated thanks to the registrar thanks to all the officers who have participated thanks to all the non teaching staff and all who were here thanks to all thank you we can be thank you thank you thank you thank you sir